Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I'm super excited to review the monitor I have with me for testing today, the Pixio PX329, because I think it's a really good value product. I'm just gonna say it right up the top, this monitor is available for just 450 US dollars, and for what it brings to the table, that's a very tasty price point. So the PX329 is the first monitor I've reviewed from Pixio, another one of those budget brands like Viotech that's, I guess you'd have to say, less commonly known than your LGs, Samsungs, Asus's, and so on. The PX329 is also the first monitor I've tested that is using a new for 2018 panel from AU Optronics, the first to offer a high refresh 1440p experience at 32 inches without a curve. We've had 32 inch 1440p 144Hz displays for a little while now, but all available models were using an 1800R curved panel. So if you wanted this great combination of refresh rate and resolution and size, you were stuck with only curved options. I personally prefer flat 16.9 displays, and I suspect many of you do as well. So it's great that AU Optronics have developed a flat alternative that's being used in the PX329. Not only is this a 32 inch 1440p 144Hz display, it's actually capable of pushing its refresh rate up to 165Hz, matching what is possible with 27 inch 1440p high refresh monitors. It uses VA technology and it supports FreeSync 2, of course, with low frame rate compensation. And at $450, it's the cheapest display, and I guess one of the only displays with these specs, as well as being price competitive with the curved options. But anyone can read off the spec sheet, let's take a look at whether the PX329 is actually any good, starting with the design. I think it was only a couple of weeks ago I was calling a, a different monitor, the best monitor design I'd looked at in a while, but I think this Pixio monitor might take that crown. The PX329 is basic, as you'd expect from a price sensitive display, but it looks fantastic and ticks most of the boxes I look for in monitor design. The front is simple and leaves all the talking to the panel itself, the bezels are reasonably slim around all four edges, and the bottom edge doesn't dominate for once. There's practically no gamer design elements, and on the front there isn't even Pixio branding with the simple PX329 logo seen in the bottom left corner. The stand is also simple and elegant, crafted from what appears to be entire pieces of metal with a powder-coated finish. The only complaint I have about the stand and the monitor as a whole, I guess, is the lack of height adjustability. The stand only supports tilt adjust. That said, you can visa mount it, and Pixio also offers a different stand you can purchase separately that adds height, swivel, and pivot adjustments. The great news for those that want to mount this monitor is it's very slim and reasonably light for a 32-inch display. The entire upper section of the rear is basically just panel and protective plastic with the components and other electronics all placed within a section towards the bottom, similar to many modern TVs. For inputs, we get two HDMI 2.0 ports, two DisplayPort 1.2 ports, and an audio output jack to pass through either HDMI or DP audio to an external speaker. The OSD is controlled through a directional toggle, which is great to see, although navigation is a little unconventional, though most typical features are included. At this point of the review, it is crucial to talk about the refresh rate of the monitor. The PX329 does push up to 165Hz, which previously I guess was restricted to a small collection of 1440p G-Sync monitors, aside from this one MSI model. So you might be thinking, great, the PX329 is another FreeSync monitor that features a 165Hz refresh rate. Unfortunately, there is a catch. The maximum refresh rate supported in this monitor's FreeSync mode is 144Hz. You actually have to disable FreeSync to get the monitor running at 165Hz. So this presents an interesting choice between adaptive sync and top-end refresh rate. Obviously, for NVIDIA the GPU owners, the choice is simple. You can't use FreeSync anyway, so set the monitor to 165Hz. But for AMD GPU owners, I'd recommend keeping FreeSync enabled and capping the monitor to 144Hz. As honestly, the difference between 144 and 165Hz isn't that large, while having FreeSync enabled can make a large difference to the playing experience. Let's move on to see how this panel performs because there's a few interesting things to note here. Firstly, the panel isn't that bright. I recorded a maximum brightness of just 223 nits, which admittedly is brighter than I would normally use, but still falls well short of Pixio's 300 nit claim. If you need a monitor for a bright environment, 
223 nits might not cut it. I also found the contrast ratio pretty interesting. This is a VA panel with a rated 3000 to 1 contrast ratio. However, in my testing, the actual ratio hovered between 1700 and 1750 to 1, which is obviously well short of what I guess you'd expect for a VA display. This is actually the first VA display I reviewed that fell below a 2000 to 1 contrast ratio. And when I asked Pixio if this was normal for the PX329, they gave me no indication it was a defect or other issues. So I assume this is within normal tolerances for the panel. With that said, I don't think the contrast ratio is a major issue either, considering the PX329 still performs ahead of IPS and TN panels in this regard with a superior black level. It's not as good as I'd have liked to see and not up there with the best VA panels, but at least there was no noticeable backlight bleed issues or random glow. Let's look at out-of-the-box color performance, and it's no surprise that the PX329 isn't that amazing in this regard, considering Pixio, well, they make no claims about color accuracy. The CCT curve looks a little strange, with blue intensity dropping right away at 100% white, but gamma is decent. However, an average delta E of 4.80, with most of the upper intensity whites pushing above a delta E of 6.0, isn't great. This mediocre performance continues looking at saturation sweeps, as well as our color checker test, both of which produce average delta E is around 4.5. Suffice to say, this isn't a well-calibrated panel out of the box. However, it's easy to write off a display from its out-of-the-box performance. The key indicator I look for is good performance after making a few tweaks using the on-screen settings, as we're not messing around with full calibration or software profiles just yet. Plus, it's the best indicator of what a typical user can achieve with this display. Just use the settings you see here, and you should get similar performance to what you're about to see without the need for any expensive calibration tools. And as you can see here, the PX329 is very receptive to OSD tweaks, particularly thanks to its adjustable saturation slider. I actually think there's a few weird setting choices by default, including saturation set to 60 and too low contrast, though I should note that increasing the contrast slider only pushes up overall contrast to around 1800 to 1, so not a major improvement there. Anyway, with a few tweaks, we're getting a much better CCT curve and a far better grayscale delta E average of 1.37, with every value below 2. 2.0. I consider this a success for OSD calibration as honestly this should be fine for most creators. Saturation delta E average improves to 1.41 with a few loose values but still a great result while color checkers average of 1.21 is also excellent. As far as OSD calibration results go, this is the best result I've seen outside of monitors that specify a certain level of color accuracy, usually those are professional grade displays, and this is all achievable really by anyone that purchases this monitor, which is an excellent result. Then of course you can tighten up performance even further through a full calibration pass using Spectracal's CalMan 5. Not a lot to see here, fairly standard results outside of 100% blue, though sRGB coverage remains north of 96%. Uniformity is one area where this new flat panel brings an advantage over the older curved models. The PX329 performs well in this regard, though the outer right side of the display does deviate noticeably from the center. That said, this result is noticeably better than curved displays, in particular the competing 32-inch curved variant of this panel used in the Viotech GN32LD, which, as you can see here, has a serious Y-axis uniformity issue. In terms of power consumption, this flat panel does consume more power when calibrated compared to the curved 32-inch variant at 74 watts compared to 60 watts with the GN32LD. Final thing to discuss are the response times. The PX329 reports in with an average greater gray response time of 8.27 milliseconds, which is typical for a VA panel and actually quite close to the 8.17 milliseconds I recorded for the similar but curved variant. The difference to note here is rise times and fall times are much more similar with the flat model, whereas the curved model has rise times almost twice as slow as fall times. Still, around that 8 millisecond mark is typical for VA. Pixio does claim 5 millisecond response times, which seems more in line with some of the faster transitions rather than an average. I should also mention I'm using the H overdrive setting, which is the highest available. However, as tends to be the case with high refresh VA displays, the average transition time is actually longer than the refresh window. In the case of this 165Hz display, the image is updated every 6.06 milliseconds, except transitions take on average 8.27 milliseconds. So 
It's not really a true 165 hertz display. Instead, ghosting and smearing are the limiting factors and that prevents the panel from providing a true 165 hertz or even 144 hertz experience. In practice, this is more like a 120 hertz panel in how it performs, though again, this is no different to the curved variants. The good news is the PX329 exhibits elite input latency of just a few milliseconds. In fact, the panel was so fast to respond, I had to adjust the normalization factor for our measurements because it was faster than any other display I'd actually tested up until this point. And of course, I made sure to calibrate this result against several other monitors to ensure I was really seeing this sort of performance. Also, it's worth mentioning that enabling FreeSync had no real impact to input latency. All tests were conducted using the monitor's 165Hz mode, which disables FreeSync, but switching FreeSync on and capping the refresh to 144Hz didn't affect this result in any meaningful way. So all things considered, I'd pretty easily recommend the Pixio PX329. Sure, it's not perfect. There are a few issues. Brightness and contrast ratio are low for a VA panel. Typical VA response times mean it's not really a 165 hertz display, and then there is that FreeSync refresh rate oddity, but when you look at the field of 32 inch 1440p high refresh monitors, the Pixio 329 is going to give you the best bang for your buck. For as low as 440 US dollars through Newegg, the PX329 is the cheapest monitor with this panel inside, though Admittedly, there aren't many options on the market right now. There should be a few more coming soon. But crucially, it's only about $40 to $50 more expensive than the cheapest curved equivalents. Personally, I'd spend the extra cash just to get a flat screen anyway, rather than curved. But that price increase is also justified due to the flat panel's superior uniformity and the PX329's excellent color results from just a few small tweaks. So Pixio may not be the most well-known brand out there, but they're getting on the front foot through utilizing brand new panels and producing excellent Excellent budget monitors. This is one I'd pretty easily recommend, and I don't think buyers will be disappointed with their purchase for just $450. Plus, I'm really digging the 32 inch size at the moment. That's it for this one. If you're interested in the calibrated monitor profile created for this display during the review process, that's available for our Patreons. Link to that in the description below. And if you sign up to our Patreon, you also get access to our exclusive Discord chat, which is a bit of fun happening in there. As always, subscribe for more monitor reviews, and I'll catch you next time.